Hey, I'm Nate. And I'm Callie. We are from the YouTube channel, The King of Random, where we do a lot of DIY projects and fun science experiments. Recently, we've partnered with Adobe to make a video where we showed a lot of experiments with liquid oxygen. One comment that we see all the time in our videos is, why do we change our title sequences so much? There's really no specific reason, but every single one of those title sequences was made using After Effects by one of our editors. So today, we're going to show you how. First thing we'll need to do is create a new composition, which we've called Main. Next, we'll create a couple folders to keep things tidy. Then we'll drag in all of the assets we'll need for the title. We'll first start with our music track and drag that into the composition. Next, we'll drag in our clips, and we've used markers to line up the cuts with the beat of the music. Once that is in place, we can then lock the music layer so that no unnecessary changes are made to it. Next, we'll want to add a sort of grungy look to the video. To do so, we'll head over to our effects panel and grab the effect Unsharp Mask and place that on the video. Then in the effects control panel, we'll adjust the amount to 150 to make the details stand out a little more. Next, we'll duplicate our clip layers a couple times and then check out different blend modes until we find one that has the look we want. Go ahead and adjust the opacity to change how strong the effects are. Once we've got that set, we'll want to add some color to the image. Create a new layer, which we'll go ahead and make into a yellow solid. We'll then go to the blend modes and change it to overlay and play with the settings until it looks right. Next, we'll want to add a vignette to the image, which we'll do by creating a new solid, turning it black, and naming it Vignette. With that layer selected, we can then double click the ellipse tool, which will create a black mask on that layer. We can then change the mode to subtract. Hit F to bring up the feather tool and then adjust the slider to get the look you want and finally set the blend mode to overlay. Then to complete our grungy look, we can go ahead and bring in this textured image. We'll go ahead and animate the image to slowly move across the screen and set the blend mode to overlay so we can see what's going on underneath it. Then, of course, adjust the settings until it looks just right. Next, we'll want to set up the transition into the hero title. First, we can grab our logo and drag it down into the composition. Then head into the effect panel and search for fill. Add that to the logo, then change the color to yellow. Next, we'll need to add an expression. To do that, highlight the layer and hit S, then hold Alt and click on the stopwatch to bring up the expressions window. Here we'll put in the code for the effect wiggle, you can then input two values. The first number states how often your element will shake per second, and the second value is how many pixels it will move on the X and Y axis. Keep messing with it until you get the right look. Now we will want to add in some graphic elements to help transition between the cuts. We have a couple pre-animated clips, but you could use any sort of graphic to achieve the same effect. So we'll go ahead and drop our clips into the timeline and adjust their blend modes to make them a little more see-through. Next, we'll need to create another solid to mask the transition even more. Head up to the layer and click to create a new solid. We'll call this layer White Bloom and change the color to white. Then, we'll make it look like how we made the vignette layer. Select the White Bloom layer, then double click the ellipse tool to create a white circle. Hit F to bring up the feather tool and go ahead and adjust the feather to your liking. Then, play with the blend modes to get the look you want. Once you've done that, Keyframe the opacity so the effect enters and exits how you want it to. From here, it's all about taking these same ideas and applying them over all the transition points with the different clips. You can use different images, different flash effects, or a combination of both to get an interesting and unique look. Once you've done that, the last thing we'll need to do is have the logo smash onto the screen at the end. To do that, we'll grab the logo from our Assets folder and bring it into the composition. Now we'll need to turn the logo into a 3D object. To do that, we can come to this column with the cube at the top and check the box for the logo layer. Once that is turned on, we'll also need to turn on motion blur by checking this box. Now what we'll want is for the logo to come in from the front and smash onto the screen, so we'll move the layer to make it line up with the final beat of the music on that last clip. Then we can adjust the position and scale to where we want the logo to end up. Once that's in position, we can slide the layer to the left a few frames to give it time to fly onto the screen. With that in place, we can then keyframe the layer so that the logo will come flying in. Adjust the settings until it's just right. With that keyed up, we will want to add a little bit more weight to the impact of the logo landing. To give that feeling, we'll go ahead and duplicate the logo layer and then add the wiggle expression like we did before. 
Go ahead and tweak the settings until it lands just how you want it to. Then you can trim both of the layers so that it only wiggles on the landing and stays stationary afterwards. And that's pretty much it. If you like, you can add a couple extra flourishes like lines and particles coming out of the logo, but either way you should have a fully finished King of Random title. And if you liked this tutorial, make sure to check out the other ones. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.